Hi, this is Raquel Hendrickson within Maricopa, and I'm here today with Mayor Christian Price and Representative Brett Roberts, who just happened to drop by <laughs> our office as they were coming back from the state legislature because they had some big news. Can you guys tell me what happened? Sure. Um, HB 2802, uh, the 347 overpass bill, um, just came out of appropriations. Um, so it's been through transportation, it's been through appropriations at this point. Uh, Mayor Price was up there, testified in front of committee. And um, so I uh, was driving home and I had this crazy notion to uh, uh, go on Facebook Live and uh, decided to swing by in Maricopa to uh, see if we could get this worked out really quick. It's really kind of an impromptu thing. Um, and the whole purpose is, you know, we want to reach out to the community. Um, in my mind, the reason why I wanted to do this is, uh, you guys may remember, about three years ago, we did Battle of the Burbs, and I'm looking for, I'm looking for a response from in from the city of Maricopa and the, the citizens of Maricopa. We need you involved. We need you to uh, to get to get involved. Okay. Well, take me back to the transportation committee. How did that go? Well, I'll leave that one up to the mayor because I was stuck in a committee and he actually ended up doing the testifying over there on that. I, I just got to make an appearance after the vote. So, <laughs> uh, Yeah, I mean, transportation was not a hard one. Obviously, it's a, a friendly committee considering this is a transportation related bill. So that wasn't a big deal. Um, I think the bigger deal today was appropriations. Uh, you know, anytime you're dealing with money, uh, as Representative Roberts can tell you, um, anytime you're dealing with money that you have to you have to go through this process by which you jump through all these hurdles because there's a lot of people asking for money. And so the legislature is tasked with the hard decisions of saying, you know, everybody wants a lot, but sometimes we can only give a little or nothing or, you know, somebody's going to get a little bit more. And how do we how do we justify that? So uh, today's vote and appropriations went really well. Um, and it, it was a 10 to 1 vote. Um, and so I think overwhelmingly there is support. But it still has a long way to go because the way the legislature is structured is that it has to deal with different hoops and, and go through the floor vote. And ultimately this may get pulled out of committees altogether and just get put into what we call the box. And the box is basically where they duke it out and figure out, you know, where in the budget does this fit? Uh, and so, you know, again, Representative Roberts can talk to you a lot more about that. Um, but it, it's, it's, we have a long road to go. But at the end of the day, what we can really use is we can use Maricopa's help uh, because this is going to take a, a citizen-wide initiative. And I don't mean a ballot initiative. I mean people, just like Representative Roberts said, people getting involved and calling people at the state legislature right now, specifically in the House, to say, we want this bill to pass. We need $35 million to go towards this overpass. And that's what we need people to do. So, so far at the legislative level, what kind of questions have they had for you that were tough or might be similar to what our residents might have? Well, um, some of the questions today in committee was more about, you know, who, um, as far as has there been a study done and things of that nature. And so, you know, we verified that um, there's a study in the process that MAG is currently doing, Maricopa Association of Governments. Um, they have a close relationship with Gila River. Um, and so, you know, we verified that. We talked about, you know, how did the cost... Uh, for the overpass get derived and you know I explained to them that um, you know it was kind of a painstaking process to get an estimate um, on what the overpass will cost and right now it's estimated that it's uh, going to be somewhere between 35 and 50 million. I told them to thank me for only asking for the 35 um, but you know and that's kind of one of the things that I wanted to uh, while we're talking is um, to clarify some of the things that I've seen in social media as far as the questions about this particular project. You know, some people have said, you know, well, well you know, how is that going to fix the problem? It's just going to move the problem up to the I-10. And one of the things we need to make very clear is that the overpass at 347 in Riggs Road would only be one piece of the puzzle. It's only one part of the entire 347 widening project that really needs to be done. Um, so there's, you know, there's several steps and the reason why it's so complicated is you have, obviously you have Pinal County, you have Maricopa County, you have MAG, you have PAG, um, you have ADOT, um, Gila River, Gila River. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's just a lot of different entities involved in this. And so you know, the, the overpass is just one part of the, the, the overall project. And what we're doing is we're trying to repeat um, the mayor's success. In, in the overpass that we did here in the city of Maricopa 
uh, you know, bringing several different entities together as far as chipping in some revenue. So that way we can go to ADOT and say, look, you know, we've got the RTA funds coming from Pinal County. We've got funds coming from the state. You know, maybe we can get some funds from Gila River, from maybe Ak Chin. Um, you know, so we can put pull, pull all of those resources together. And when we go to ADOT, we can say, look, we've got all of this. We're invested in this project. We got 55 is it 55,000 people in the city of Maricopa? Roughly 43,000 people drive this road every day. And, you know, we've now had, with last night's incident, 10 deaths in just a little over three years. We, and um, we've had two incidents that I'm aware of since the data that, that I was given. So that's going to be like 13 other serious accidents right there at that intersection in just a little over three years. So this is an issue that, you know, lives are at stake. Um, and, you know, and you know what? Besides that, I drive it every day. So that's the reason why it's important to me. I drive it just like the other 43,000 people do every day. It's important. Um, you know, I leave my house and it takes me anywhere from an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes to get to the Capitol to do the, to the, do the work of the, the, the district. So, um, I've been talking a lot, so I'll stop now. <laughs> so if, if people do want to somehow make an impact, what is the best way for them to do that? Well, uh, you know, if, if I may, can I back up just a second yeah. here? Um, you know, I think there's an answer to that question, but part of it is understanding. And, and like Representative Roberts said, I think he did a good job of explaining, you know, what is the process here? Um, this is just one piece of the puzzle. But, but one of the things people don't understand is that, you know, in today's day and age with ADOT, there is a lot of ask, there's a lot of need in the state. And so in order for you to get on what is known as the five-year plan, you have to have a project that is ready in a lot of facets. And one of those facets, the most important one is, what is your pathway to funding? And I know that when we did the overpass here, it was really frustrating because you know, we would say, hey, we want to move forward with this. And they'd say, well, you need to do your environmentals because you receive federal dollars. You know, any money that comes from the feds, even through ADOT and trickle down to you, it means that it's a federal dollar and it's tracked as such. And so you have to have environmentals done. Well, you can't do environmentals if you don't have a pathway to funding. You can't get a pathway to funding unless you do environmentals. This is the classic catch-22 that everybody hates in government. And so we had to literally go to Washington, D.C. and get the Federal Highway Administration to say, break this free. Okay. Now, when we look at the outcome, we see that we have a successful project. But it wasn't until we broke that free that allowed us to really start the next part of the project, which is how do we aggregate funding from stakeholders? Because when you go to ADOT now and you say, hey, I need this project, they laugh at you, right? Because there's just simply not enough money. But if you can go to ADOT and say, hey, I want this project, but I'm also funding it halfway, now suddenly you go, oh. ADOT says, well, we can actually do this. In fact, for that total cost, we could have only done one project. Now we can do two projects, right? Or three or four or five, depending on what their breakdown is. But in order to get into the five-year plan, that five-year plan has to be fiscally constrained. And here's the other problem with that. In its fiscal constraint, there is no money in the outlying years of the five-year plan for any expansion, which means 347 doesn't stand a prayer in getting in there unless we aggregate enough money now. And we're going to have to, it's going to have to fall on us to do it. So the answer to your question is, how can people help? Well, they can help us do what we can't do by ourselves. I mean, we're down at the legislature, Representative Roberts is down there every day and, and you know, lobbying for our interests and, and advocating for us. And then I go down to support him and, and all of our folks, especially in issues that, that supply to Maricopa. But we need a broader coalition of people and regular citizens to write emails, to pick up the phone, to call these people in, in the entire House of Representatives, whether they're Republican or Democrat, and say, as this you know comes to the floor, as it comes to a, a, a vote on the budget, we need your support for $35 million for the 347 Riggs Road overpass. Because again, that goes into this bucket. And if the 30 million from the Prop 416, 417 goes into this bucket, Gila River dumps money into this bucket, City of Maricopa, you see the odds here. And then all of a sudden, now it primes us for getting bills or infra grants from the federal government at $50 million. We literally can now go to ADOT and say, we have $125 million of 150 to a $200 million project. Are you really gonna tell us now? 
And that's how you win. That's how you win at this game. And so in order for us to do it, we need your help. We need the citizens' help to literally pick up the phone and do their part. And Representative Rogers is, is correct. We did it with the Battle of the Verbs. Why can't we do it with something that's really, really important and has lives on the line? So to, just to tack, you know, tack on to what Mayor Price just said, you know, specifically what the citizens of Maricopa can do is you can go on the AZ Ledge website, look up the appropriations committees, find out who's on there. You know, like in, in the House, it's Chairman Cobb, uh, Vice Chairman Kavanaugh, Ben Toma, uh, Anthony Kern, Michelle Udall, uh, John Fillmore. By the way, John Fillmore used to represent Maricopa, and he gave a glowing recommendation. He said this was needed eight years ago. Um, you got uh, Dr. Fries, uh, Minority Leader uh, Fernandez, myself, uh, Representatives Lieberman and Espinoza all in the House. You know, they all voted it out, but you need to contact leadership, um, like uh, Majority Leader uh, Warren Peterson, um, Speaker Bowers. Uh, and, and the same thing over in the Senate. you got Majority Leader Rick Gray, President Karen Fan, um, you know, the, the, the whip in both the House and the Senate. Um, basically, what we need you to do is make phone calls, write emails. You know, if you, if you got the day off and you want to participate... Call up, call them up and uh, one of these individuals and call them up and say, hey, you know, um, I want to schedule an appointment. I want to come in and talk to you and explain to you why this is so important. You guys drive, you guys drive it every day. I drive it every day. If there was ever an issue that we're all on board with, this is it. So after the fact, if, if you choose to do nothing, don't complain on Facebook because if there's an accident on 347. If you choose to sit there and do nothing, we need your help. We can't do it alone. We need you to get involved. And it, and it goes a long way. I mean, it really does. It's, it's one thing for your elected officials to stand up on your behalf and to say, this is important to us. This is what we fight for all the time, right? But there's a lot of people down there fighting for those same interests. And so... I think one of the things that moves elected officials more than anything is when they hear from the general public. And, and when it comes in an overwhelming response of, I support this because, and I'm not talking about a form letter, right? I mean, he'll be the first to tell you that form letters, they kind of start to fall on deaf ears. You get 4,000 emails and they all said the same thing. Well, what's different? Why, why do you support this? All I got was, you know, somebody else wrote this. But if, but if you speak from the heart and you tell them why you need it, and it doesn't have to be long, right? I mean, you know, they don't have time to, to read the whole diatribes, but a couple of paragraphs indicating your support and why it's important, that goes a long way. And, and again, every time, I can only imagine, I know what I do, but I can only imagine what they do. They kind of take a mental tally and say, I keep getting support. And I, I frankly think that, and I've heard this once already, but I'd really love to see it is I'd love to see that I, I know that I've already heard that members of the committee have said, yes, I have heard from your members in uh, Maricopa or citizens in Maricopa already. I've been getting the emails, right? That was a great glowing recommendation, but I think it was only scratching the surface of what we're possible and capable of here in the city. Yes, Chairman Cobb did share with me. She's like, you guys are doing a great job. I'm hearing from your constituents, but I, I just get the feeling that, you know, from what I see come into my inbox, um, and on, on other issues, uh, to what Mayor Price just said, we are just scratching the surface. I don't know if I'm not being CC'd on them or, or what the case may be, but I just feel like we're only scratching the surface, and, and I know Maricopa can do better. This is, this is a bipartisan issue. This is something that we all need. Um, this will help Maricopa grow. Uh, this isn't just about sitting an hour and a half on 347. This will help Maricopa in so many different ways, economic development-wise, you know, things of that nature. It's just, it's, it's, it's extraordinarily needed, but we need to help. We need your help to convey that message to leadership, to, to the, you know, in, you know, uh, Senator Leach, who is your, rep your, you know, Senator as well, he's on appropriations in the Senate. So he can, you know, help him over there in the Senate. He needs help over there getting he's this message. He, and he's a co-sponsor of the bill as well. You guys have a long day. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's okay. I mean, this is this is what it takes, right? And and I think that, you know, the legislature is a very unique animal. Uh, I think that uh, while there's a lot of good bills and bad bills that come out of anything, just like there's good policy and bad policy that comes out of any governmental uh, body, at the end of the day, 
the legislature is kind of geared to kill bills. That's what it's that's what it's for. And it's not that it's you know a mean intended process, but rather it's it's the ability for the people to speak up and say what they want. And if they want something bad enough, they'll shepherd it through the process. And I think that's what Representative Roberts and myself are trying to do is we're saying we're gonna go to everything, we're gonna be at everything. That's why we spent all day at the legislature today. I mean, he that's his job, but it's not technically my job, but it is my job because it affects my constituency. It affects our constituency, and that's what it's about. So if it affects you, Maricopa, then pick up the phone, write your email, and Start calling these people because, like you said, it doesn't leave a lot of room to complain if you can't take the five minutes that it, that it takes to, to send an email and say, I support this because. It's really easy to find. I had someone post on my website uh, or Facebook the other day uh, all the members of the uh, committee and what their emails were. So it was really easy for someone to grab them and, and to paste them and, and, uh, and, and go and do it. So, you know, those types of things are, are really simple and, and we can certainly make that available again. But but he's right. We need to make sure we're contacting leadership uh, so that from a budgetary standpoint, it's going in there. And we've heard rumors that it's going to make at least the House budget before it goes over to the Senate. But it's nowhere near what it needs to be. So let's get out there and let's promote it at $35 million, nothing less. So what's the timing? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because there, there's budget meetings going on right now. So we can't hesitate. We need people. We need people to actually sit down and do it now. After we're done here, sit down, get online. It's azledge.gov. It's it's a pretty easy website. You can uh, you can click on um, you can find the uh, membership list, and it'll tell you whether or not they're leaders or you know in leadership or not. Um, you can look at the particular uh, committees and things of that nature, but. Time is of the edge essence. There's urgency at this at this point in time because this session we're doing budget a little bit different. Budget is um, they they want to have a budget done. They wanted it done by this week. We're in crossover week, so this is the week that all the bills in the house go over to the Senate. And so it, I I can't stress it enough. Time is of the essence. There is urgency. Um, we need people to you know actually get on top of it, and there's there should be no hesitancy here. Um, it, I, I can't stress that enough. But um, you asked, was there anything else? I know that we're live right now. Is there anybody asking any questions that we might be able to answer? Because I, I want to answer any questions anybody has about the whole project, just to kind of clarify and put, the, you know, uh, hopefully put some of those those things to to rest. Yeah. You know, as far as we know, have this... people with engineering ideas <laughs> right now, so <laughs> you're always going to well. Be and let me address the engineering uh, folks. I mean. So I, I think those ideas are great, and we've, I've certainly gotten my share of, of ideas. So what we have to do is we have to follow ADOT specifically and MAG and all of these uh, uh, different groups. We have to follow these required steps as per state law. And so when we do that, it basically goes and goes through what's called a scoping study. And the scoping study looks at Queen Creek Boulevard interchange all the way to basically Peters and All Road through Maricopa and into uh, Akchen, so to speak. And with that, it takes and it looks at all of the possibilities. What, what options need to be put in there? What are the different options that could go in there? Uh, what combinations can work and can't work? What is, you know, what is all that stuff uh, play out to be? And so that is what is transpiring right now. It's in Gila River's hands at the moment. Uh, I know that they are starting to push it forward and get it uh, accomplished. And we hope to see those, uh, those red lines and results in their comments. And then hopefully that study will be laid out here for the public to see here in the next several months. Um, so that's coming, uh, and it, it is. It's all about engineering. You cannot get to the end game without going through the appropriate in engineering steps. And it seems like you guys are sold on the idea that an overpass will fix some of the problem there. Others say it's struggles, but you can't fix it. Sure. <laughs> but <laughs> well, you know, what are some other ideas that are being studied? Yeah, you know, again, it's, it's hard to say at the moment because the, because the scoping study is not finished. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I think that I, I always tout it as a three-part component because these folks aren't wrong. When they say, if you just put an overpass at Riggs Road, that really helps alleviate that problem. But what's it do? It pushes everybody to the next problem, right? So you have to take all the major problems in coordination one with another, and you have to put in a multi-step process to fix the biggest of all of them. But what people don't understand is it's not just as simple as saying, hey, here's a need, do it, right? Regardless of money. It, the problem is, is you have to deal with the legal aspects of what does it look like? 
with ownership, right? Because Gila River owns it. And Gila River has their own breakdowns of, of individual families who own pieces of that area. So what does that look like? What does it look like with the median versus not the median from a, from a widening perspective? What does it look like from a, the, they call it the TI, the traffic interchange at Queen Creek and, and uh, 347. And that was built for a whole different group of people traveling over that. It's outdated, it doesn't work, and it no way was ever intended to handle the, the thousands upon thousands. I mean, we talk about 43,000 people commuting. I'm up and down that road five, six, seven, eight times a day. So if you count me eight times, you know what I mean? And I don't know how many other people do the same thing. That I mean, it could be 60, 70, 80,000 people that come up and down that road every day. That traffic interchange was not meant for that. So that has to be rebuilt and redesigned. So all of these pieces have to go in coordination. And there might be some simpler issues and designs that work, but we won't know that until it plays out in the scoping study. Exactly. Exactly. And Maricopa County seems to be on board with... There needs to be a fix there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the benefits of, of being in MAG is that they absolutely understand the benefits that come uh, with a piece of their, because remember, we're their workforce, right? So all these folks that commute from Maricopa into the Maricopa County, they are working in their jobs. And so while we're doing our best to bring more jobs here, at the end of the day, we're supporting them. So they need to support us too. And they have been, they've been very supportive. MAG has, has helped lead this charge in bringing together GRIC and ADOT in ways that they haven't been so apt to work together and until now. So it's it's a good thing. Exactly. Can you fly over ramps again? Um, <laughs> Okay. And, and those, again, those are great ideas, but all of it costs money too, yes. right? So you got to remember if, if every dollar is precious and every dollar counts, you can't just do the most expensive, the most creative thing sometimes. You have to do with what works to solve the problem. And that, that kind of has to go hand in hand. Right. So essentially what, what it boils down to is we're just, you know, I, I had this crazy idea on my, on my way home. I knew Mayor Price was coming back from the legislature because he had just left a little bit before me. And um, I was like, you know what? We we gotta get uh, we gotta get Maricopa worked up. We gotta get them on board. We gotta get, ask for their help, and um, that's that's why we're here tonight, talking with them, and uh, hopefully uh, we can get some assistance. And you know, um, even, you know, even if we get half a million dollars more, a million million dollars more, it was worth it. And and if we don't succeed this time, we're gonna go back next year. Um, you know, because this this is important. Lives are at stake. Thank you.